Okay, perhaps one of the most important things in all of digital marketing is knowing how to assign keywords to a specific web page and understand how and who you are targeting on a page through keywords. So today, I'm gonna to do a follow-up to the other video I did on competitive analysis, and I'm gonna teach you specifically how to do a keyword strategy for a website. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Okay, so today we're talking about how to do a keyword assignment for a website. This can be a pretty complicated topic depending on the size of the website. In fact, at certain points in my life, I have spent, at one point I spent an entire day at home doing a keyword strategy, a dynamic keyword strategy for one of the largest motocross websites in the entire world. Thinking about how all the different brands and products and sizes and genders and colors and models and how all these different things, the content, how it all worked together, and then mapping it out dynamically so that they could put it into their system and just have it all generated at once. That's not really what I'm talking about here today. What I'm talking about here today is kind of more the basics, how you select one specific keyword, which is a follow-up to the other video I did, which make sure you watch, which is the video on how to find the right keywords and how to get all of them into your universe. So this is after you've kind of found them, what do you do so that you target them correctly on your website. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to select your term. So what term are we going after? After you know that, we want to determine where it fits best into the website. And that can be kind of tricky, right? But usually if you did the steps that I said before and you lay out your site structure, then you're going to have a very, very good understanding of exactly what term goes where. That's why search engine optimization over time with somebody who really understands your site or paid media over time, any type of key we're targeting with somebody who understands the site architecture is really, really important because I can think about any site that I've worked with and I'm like, that keyword goes where? So in this case, we're looking at a really, really basic site, a site that's got a blog, a site that has pages, categories, and a different type of product level. And so when you're selecting your keyword, you want to think, does it go here? Does it go here? Does it go here? Does it go here? And here are some of the things you need to think about as you're going through that selection uh, process. So first, are you going after one term or are you going after multiple terms on a page? That's pretty important because usually a blog post will go after one term in most cases. It's one term, you're going after it on a blog post, you're writing a long form piece of content where you're really targeting that term. And yes, it will naturally rank more over time, meaning the post will probably rank for more terms over time because naturally web pages, they rank for more terms over time if it's a high quality site. On a page, on kind of like a hub page, a very important page for the website, in most cases, that's going to rank for multiple terms and I'm going to come back to that. Is it a category? When it comes to a category or when it comes to a product on a website, those are specifically optimized for terms generally dynamically, meaning that they're following the same type of template every single time. So it's the same three to five keywords here, three to five keywords here. And for the product pages, you're always optimizing them for the product name. And for the category page, you're always optimizing it for whatever the category is. So if it's motocross boots, for example, that would be your category. And so you always want to make sure that you're splitting those things up in the right way. Now, when when we're looking at all these things together, um, what we want to do next is kind of think about what does an actual keyword assignment look like. So a general keyword assignment for a page, which is what most people want to do on a website, a general keyword assignment for a page is going to look something like this. So I'm going to get into this. This is different than what would be a category or a product. If you want to learn about these ones, check out the other video I did on YouTube that goes over dynamic keyword optimization, because that really spells all this out. There's also another great video on local dynamic keyword optimization that's going to teach you how to do this just for local pages. So state, city, zip code, Code, stuff like that. So, but when we're looking at a web page, so an important service page on your website, an important top level page, this is how most people will do a keyword assignment. 
So imagine the page is about uh, FIFA soccer balls, right? It's just one page um, about FIFA soccer balls. You would find these six terms and you pull these terms from your competitive analysis and you're going after FIFA soccer ball, FIFA World Cup soccer ball, FIFA football, FIFA soccer balls 2019, best FIFA soccer ball, official FIFA soccer ball. Now what are you seeing here that's a common theme? FIFA soccer ball, FIFA soccer ball, FIFA football, that's just a deviation. So when you're in you know, a European country, that's the way that they refer to it. So they, everybody knows it's the same thing. FIFA soccer ball is a theme through all of this, right? And then we're basically ranking this by highest search volume and um, highest propensity for a conversion so that we can basically get um, the most value if we rank. It's, it's by most important to least important, right? So if, if you were taking this from you know, your, your pay-per-click campaigns, you would be positioning it this way. If you're just doing it from most search traffic to least search traffic, you could also do it that way. But you always wanna think about conversions here, not just traffic, right? After you have all this, you're generally going to take these top two or three terms, two or three terms, and work them into the title without making it too spammy. Nowadays, we want to have really, really great titles. Make sure to check out the other video I did on how to create the perfect page title in 2019. You're going to work this into the description, so the meta description for the page, as well as the Facebook Open Graph tags as well, which is usually part of most platforms now. If you don't know what Facebook Open Graph tags are there the way that Facebook pulls data from websites. So when we tell Facebook, hey, here's an open graph tag, and here's the information for how we want you to display the title and description of the page, it, it takes that. You can find out if you have them on your website just by um, going and viewing the source and then doing a control F and putting in OG, um, semicolon title, for example. It'll show you if, if you have open graph titles. Then you're gonna want to put this primary keyword in the H1, generally the primary or the secondary in the H2. You're gonna wanna work on these keywords keywords into the copy. So these first few, um, you're going to want to work in, you know, four to six times in, in, a, in a couple thousand words of, of copy. These last couple ones, you're going to want to work in, you know, maybe one time. You just want to get the keywords on the page without over optimizing it, right? And then you're going to take this primary keyword, you're going to put it into the image file name, image alt text, image caption, so that it Google sees that it's part of the images as well. By the way, Google Image Search is the second biggest search engine in the world world, right? It's a huge, huge search engine. Actually, don't quote me on that. YouTube might be second. I think image search is, is three, but it's a massive, massive, massive search engine. And as a final step, you want to update the internal linking. So from um, all the similar pages on your website on the same level, if they're referencing something like a, a FIFA soccer ball, you internally link back to this page. Also, if it's a really important page on your site, you're gonna want to put that link in the footer of your website to FIFA soccer ball so that Google knows that that is what exactly that page is for. Great video on internal linking on the YouTube channel if you wanna check that out. For some reason, I'm shouting out all my other videos in this one. Now, other things to keep in mind. You've done this keyword assignment, so if you're creating this page and it's specifically on this, don't you think you should take this, these keywords and then replicate that into your AdWords account, right? And, and target these same terms? Don't you think that you should put this into your Bing account and target these same terms? Don't you think that you should you know, use this for your, your, your dynamic um, uh, paid media ads, right? Your, and, and, and making sure that those are coming back. Don't you think that you should be setting up a remarketing sequence within paid media that's specific to this? Or how about you have an email pop up that fires on this page offering people 10% off of FIFA soccer balls and then they get into an email automation sequence that then sends them into a, a drip campaign so that they're getting discounts for this in case they didn't convert, right? Think about all these things holistically because these things help 3x a, a, you know, a business opposed to just one small channel. But we really wanna think about digital marketing holistically nowadays. Don't just think about SEO, think about how all these things work together. At the end of the day, this is basically how you do a keyword assignment. You get some keywords, you assign it to a web page. Generally within content marketing, it's just kind of one term you're targeting. And then generally when it's pages, it's, it's three to five categories or usually two to four in a dynamic optimization and product 
product is usually just the main product name and then deviations off of that. One last thing I will say is, is these do rank for more stuff over time. We're seeing that more and more. So check out the other video, my last shout out today on the keyword multiplier system, which is also on the Ignite Visibility YouTube channel. Hope you like this video. Hope you learned something about keyword assignments today. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I love getting your comments. See you next time. Have a great day.